welcome to another Soul Bird Selection Game Review. A couple of weeks ago I gave you the option of choosing a game related to pirates or cowboys and the votes went in the favour of cowboys. So the game I'm playing this time around is Train Robbers. This is a Silver Range game released in 1987. Pretty uncommon game to find out there and I paid £3.20 for it. So one of the more expensive games I've bought for this collection. So Train Robbers, let's take a look at it and see how it plays. So we've got a pretty nice front cover on this one. You've got the classic Wild West font there with the game name Train Robbers in it. And you've got the train, obviously, and some cowboys on their horses up the side of it there. The trains are interacting with the frame around the cassette inlay quite nicely as well. Although I suspect really it would have been better if it was coming from inside the frame outwards rather than outside the frame inwards. But there you go, I'm splitting hairs a little bit. Over to the spine then, and you've got that Train Robbers logo on there again in that classic Wild West font. Back cover, got a couple of screenshots. You can see a guy on horseback alongside a train there and also something which is some kind of maze or whatever inside something there. So we'll get on to what that means pretty soon. And the blurb about the game says, Engines, cacti, tunnels and trouble in this rooting tooting arcade game. Some more horses on the back there as well. So inside we've got the obligatory list of games available in the Silver Range packaging and then we've got the instructions of course. Train Robbers copyright Andrew Holdroyd and you play the part of Wild West Desperado Cactus Pete who in summary has got to rob a train. You can see all the details of what he's got to do there. And you've got loading instructions as always. Gameplay instructions, there's several sections and it's got the controls for each of those. You've got to board the train by running alongside it with your horse and climbing up a ladder. Uh, then you've got to run along the top of the train, uh, including lying flat to avoid tunnels and things like that. And then once you're inside the car where the safe is, you've got to collect some keys, avoid snarling dogs, open the safe. Then when you've got the loot, you've got to climb out and then move back along the train and get back on your horse. That's the short version of all those instructions, but they are nice and comprehensive. So the game's loaded and you're presented with this blue title screen, nice Firebird logo at the top, otherwise fairly unimaginative. It does flick between that and this quite nice wanted poster for Cactus Pete though, that's quite nicely done. We've got a tune in the background as well, that's a Rob Hubbard tune, not one of his best, but it's alright. It's got a kind of train noise sound in it, so I guess that's why it was chosen for this game. Uh, and as you can see, you've got the credit there, Andrew F. Holdroyd. I think this was actually his only game for the Commodore 64. And as you can see at the bottom there, in the some little icons where you can choose between one and two players and one and two joysticks. So obviously for now, I'm just going to stick with one player and one joystick. It's not simultaneous two players by the way, it's alternating. So let's get on with the game and I'm going to start by showing you how not to play it. Now, basically the idea of the game is you're riding your horse, you've got to board the train, uh, get to the carriage at the back, break into the carriage, uh, get two keys to open a safe, get the stuff from the safe, and then move back out of the train and make your way back to the front of the train to get on your horse and that basically completes a level. So here's a train coming up alongside. So the idea is you've got to catch up with the train. You've got horsepower by the way at the top there but that doesn't really play much of a part because it's pretty easy to catch up with the train without running out of those horseshoes. So the idea is you've got to le get level with the train, at the, sorry the carriage at the front which happens eventually um, and climb up this ladder here and you've got to line up precisely with it and if you don't and you try and get close to it and you hit one of these cactuses that's one way to lose a life there are many other ways which I'm going to demonstrate a couple of them now so that was that's the easiest way to lose a life you can do that right from the start because you can see he's going along there and he would hit that cactus so that's not a very nice way to start the game so that's the first thing. So the next thing is I'm going to show you a couple of other ways to die, which will involve getting onto the train. As you can hear, the train's slowly approaching. You can hear it chugging away, which is quite a nice effect. It does get louder until it eventually comes alongside you. 
here it comes. Here we go. So I've just got to get alongside the ladder there. And you have to be dead straight with it. There I am. And then wait for a cactus to go past and then move along and jump onto the train. So that's the first problem. I'm just ducked there because I knew there was a tunnel coming. That's the second problem is tunnels come along quite regularly and if you hit if you're standing up when the tunnel arrives you hit the tunnel and you'll die and the, the third problem is jumping over these train carriages which you can see I missed timed it's got to be a pixel perfect jump if not you fall off and you die so the last death I'm going to show you is what happens when you hit the tunnel okay so on the top of the train carriage there's the tunnel if I don't duck down, that's what happens. And there's another way to die, which is if for some reason you're inside the tunnel, crouched down, and you decide to stand up, you also die that way as well, but that never happens. So there you go, that's how not to play the game. Now I'm going to attempt to try and show you how you are supposed to play the game, which is not easy. Um, there was a comment on one of my videos recently where someone was saying they don't know I've got the patience to play through some of these games without swearing. Well, let me tell you, in practicing this game, I swore a lot, and I may well do so on this video, because it is damn frustrating at times. Let's see how I get on. The quite nice animation of the guy riding his horse. The graphics are a bit chunky, but there's got a bit of character to them. I think the train's quite nicely animated as well. Cactuses are good. There's a bit of parallax scrolling going on. There's nice mountains in the background. So all in all, the graphics are pretty nice. So basically, you just get the slightest little glitch in the picture when the tunnel's about to appear, and that's the only warning you get that the tunnel's coming. Now the main problem is that it's fire to duck, but it's also fire to jump. So if you're walking along, and you press fire, then you jump. And as you've just seen there, um, if you're still pushing to the left and you press fire when you're trying to duck, instead you jump in the air and hit the edge of the tunnel which is really bloody frustrating. So I'm back on the train carriage again. What I've found the best approach is, is duck, jump over two carriages, duck, jump over two carriages and keep going until you get to the end of the train. It doesn't always play out that way because it's not the same interval every time when a tunnel appears. So sometimes one will appear quite quickly after another and other times it'll be quite a long time. So it is random, which makes it all the more difficult. You also see when you come out of tunnels that sometimes the landscape changes from sometimes it's a nice green lush landscape like this. Sometimes it's a desert. Sometimes it's more of a sort of monument. Like, oh no, it's happened again. You can see I was nearly at the end there just trying to duck. You literally get a fraction of a second to make the decision. If you don't do it, then away he goes alive. So I'm back starting a second game and I've just made my way to the end of the train. I've got three lives now, so that gives me a chance to show you the next part of the game. So I've managed to negotiate the top of the train. I'm now in the uh, loot carriage, or they want to call it the bullion carriage, I think they call it. So I'm on this ladder. I'm pretty safe here. In fact, totally safe. So there's two dogs you can see. They're not very well drawn dogs. They're two black dogs running around amongst all these crates. Uh, and I've got to collect the two keys and then go to the safe, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, and unlock it. I mean, honestly, not really a very smart person who owns this train to keep the uh, the two keys just in the same room as the safe. But let's not dwell on that too much. Let's try and get past these dogs. And there you go. You can see as soon as the dog hits you, you get thrown back to the start of the train, to the start of the room, and you have to try again. So... The dogs do sort of follow you, they, they kind of roam randomly until you move down onto the floor of the carriage and then they start to try and track you down. So you need to try and wait for a point where they're sort of out of the way. In fact, this might not be a bad point if they're both... No, that's not going to work now, but let's see how this goes. Right, so there's one key, got quite easily. You see the dogs sort of follow you a little bit. So there you go, now I've got to the corner and got the safe open. Now I've got to get back to the ladder and get back out along the train. Which again, easier said than done. But I think I've managed to do it actually. So get myself up the ladder. There we go. So now I've got to make my way back to the front of the train carriage. Now, before I go on there, 
let me say that now you don't have to deal with the tunnels anymore but instead they're all like telegraph poles you've got to jump over so I think this is actually a bit easier than going to the back of the train coming from it is a bit easier I think but, but I got caught on the on the telegraph pole jumping over the train carriage and then hit the pole unfortunately uh, so there goes another life now unfortunately I think you have to go back and get open the safe again yes you do so let's give that another shot halfway there no nope. and the dog's got me and that's game over you can see it's quite a frustrating game so I'll play through again and try and get to that point again you've already seen it can be very annoying this game but I will keep trying in fact this time I'm going to give myself twice as many chances by having two player mode on right so after several attempts unsuccessful I might add I've managed to get back to the carriage got the loot from the safe and I'm on the ladder and I've got a couple of lives left so I'm going to give it a shot and see how far I get I know one of these barriers comes along eventually so my plan is to try and jump that first it's not going to do it now is it but as soon as I jump over this I oh, oh I don't believe it I've missed time to jump oh god that's so annoying let's give it another shot I'm starting to learn a little bit more about how these dogs work well, it doesn't help when they're both right at the end of the carriage right from the start, but let's see how I get on. Nope, it's got me. Luckily, with both players, I'm already in the carriage now, so I haven't got to do the boarding the train thing over and over again. So that's a good thing. Oh. Okay, that's a safe open now, so you can just run it. It's actually quite easy to get back to the ladder once you open the safe most times. So let's give it another shot. I know this thing's coming at some point. I've just got to, there we go, I've timed it. I think you only get it once on the way back on the first level. So now you've got to jump on your horse and you don't go down the ladder, you just kind of drop off the side of the train onto your horse and escape. So that's the first level completed, but there is this bonus stage which I got shot on straight away. But the idea is there is you're getting chased by the law and you have to shoot them and the more you shoot, uh, the longer you last, the more bonus points you get. So that's one level completed and now we have to go back and do it all again um, but it's even harder now but at least you've seen a full cycle of a level let's see if I, how far I get this time around only got one life left now you can see you get the barriers straight away as soon as you get onto the train you get the telegraph pole so that's the end of player one's game but I have still got one more shot at getting the loot with player two so I'll give that a try and then I've had enough okay well so far so good just got to try and stop the two no it's got me and that's it that's game over I made a right mess of that I think we've seen enough I've definitely played enough oh there we go, I've got uh, my name in for player one it seems, I've got more than 4,000 points, I assume that is. That's never happened to me before so that's nice to see. So let's just do that, yeah, so if you get the high score you get to put your name in against that wanted poster and I managed it by just four dollars it seems. So there you go, that's train robbers. You've seen pretty much all there is to see, there are a few extra things that I've seen on other people's YouTube videos. Um, on later levels you get um, Native Americans shooting at you from the side of the tracks and uh, the layout inside the um, loot car changes as well so it's more difficult to get to and from the safe but you're never going to see that from my playthrough because I'm just not good enough at it so let's get on with the review scores starting with the packaging which I thought was really good, I like the image on the front, I like the text, the description of the game is decent and the instructions are good as well, so I'm going to give that 8 out of 10. Presentation is 
average, I would say. The title screen tune is all right, it's not great. This wanted poster thing is good, but the title screen's a bit bland otherwise. Until now, I didn't think it had a high score save of any kind, but it turns out it does. You just have to get a high enough score. Um, so that was a bit of a surprise, but I'm still only going to give it 6 out of 10 for presentation. I do like the fact that you can choose one or two players with that little option on the title screen as well though. Graphics I think are pretty decent, they're not amazing, they're a bit chunky, but they do have a lot of character. The animation is quite nice on the horse and things like that, the dogs on, on the other hand are a bit terrible. So I'm going to go with 7 out of 10 for the graphics. Sound, I've already mentioned this tune is pretty average, but uh, the in-game sounds it's a bit like when I reviewed Hero, um, they're, they're pretty basic but what they do is pretty good, it's a pretty good rendition of what they're trying to do, so the noise of the train and the sound of the hooves of the horse, that's pretty much all you get but they are done quite well. So with all that in mind we're going to give the sound 6 out of 10. And finally playability, well it's really close to being a really good game. It's just so hard and so frustrating when you keep getting smacked by the tunnel, I have to repeat that whole um, session of that whole sequence sorry of moving up the side of the train and boarding the train and then moving your way down the carriages so you have to repeat that over and over again sometimes when you get so close and then you just get hit by making a mistake the problem with the controls of having jump and duck being exactly the same control with the fire button and the only difference is whether you're moving the joystick that's what's really stopping it from being a good game because the actual stages of boarding the train, getting the loot, getting off the train and then the little bonus round at the end are all really good. I, you didn't unfortunately see the bonus round to the best of my ability. I have done better on that on previous playthroughs but it is quite a good bonus round. You can collect pickups and things. I think you can actually collect extra lives there as well. So all those elements are really good but it's just so frustrating and it's really frustrating. It's so annoying. And for all that, because of all that, I'm only going to give it 6 out of 10 for playability. Just two little things would have made it more playable. One is some kind of warning that there's a tunnel coming, like the beep of the train, like a, the, the horn of the train, or the uh, some kind of beeping or like a flash of the screen or something like that. Just more warning that the tunnels are coming. And also just making it a bit easier to start with so maybe like you don't have to traverse six train carriages you only have to do three and you only have to avoid one dog in the loop car things like that would have just made it a little bit easier a little bit more accessible to get into so yeah it's so close to being a good game but for me it's just so frustrating that I can't give it a higher score than six out of ten for playability so with all that said and I did go on a bit there overall score is seven out of ten with all that said, I do still think it's a pretty good game, a good budget game. If you've got the patience and the perseverance, then you could get a high score on it as well. So yes, I'm going to say it was worth the 190 I asking prize. So there you go, that's Train Robbers. If you've ever played this game and got any thoughts about it, good or bad, then as always, please let me know in the comments. Okay, with another review done, it's time, as always, for you guys to decide which game I play in a future video. And I've got two Silverbird range games to choose from this time. Both with a theme of, well, bounciness. Bouncy things, let's say. So the choices are Pogo Stick Olympics or Hopper Copper. So what kind of bouncy thing would you like to see? The Pogo Stick or the Space Hopper? Really, I'm expecting both of these games to be terrible. So you make the choice in the comments. As always, let me know which game you prefer me to play next. And also let me know if you've got any thoughts about Train Robbers. I'll be back soon with another game review. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.